You wake up every day angry. Uh, Sebastian, he is... Uh... Like to say to whoever has my children that they please. <laughs> We're just hoping that he... Functioning, artistic, um... in life <laughs> wherever you are just know that we are not going to stop this is reporter room with jessica della davies Hello, reporter room investigators my name is jessica della davies i'm an investigative journalist my job is to investigate crime scenes potential suspects and evidence and show you how to do the same thing. Please subscribe, hit the notification bell, and smash the like button. Everything I'm sharing is my opinion. Let's get started. Are you watching closely? So I did watch the Dave Pascal interview with Seth Rogers, Tony Mathias, and we didn't learn what we thought we were going to learn, but we did learn some very interesting information. The interview was ginned up to the public that Seth was going to reveal the CPS records by Tony and Seth. Therefore, I think a lot of people were disappointed not to see these or at least hear more about them. But Seth was not able to release them because he tells us that it's against the law to release these records. I did some digging and Seth's right. But we did learn some interesting things. Are you watching closely? First of all, we learned that CPS has additional reports and that these reports had absolutely nothing to do with the Chris Proudfoot belt incident where Chris Proudfoot claims he did it because Sebastian was lying. I don't believe him. Do these reports have anything to do with Katie Proudfoot or do they have something to do with Chris Proudfoot? We don't know yet, but it sounds like something has gone above and beyond the pale in the Proudfoot home and that this CPS incident or incidents need to be taken seriously. We also learned that the Sumner County Sheriff's Office was offered the reports by Seth. He let them know that he had them. However, Seth stated that the Sumner County Sheriff's Office told him they had had the report that they'd had these reports for months. Seth expanded a little bit on the report, stating that it opened up his eyes to what was going on in the Proudfoot home. Now, this is not an exact quote. This is basically a synopsis of what he said. Seth also said that he had let some people go from his team because they were, quote, tweeting like a bird. I'm assuming that he's talking about his former private investigator, Chloe. Now, I do think that the loss of Chloe is a huge loss for the Sebastian Rogers missing person case. I think Chloe brought a level of expertise to the team, and I have to say I am very disappointed that Seth let her go. I don't know what was going on behind the scenes, but Seth thought he and Chloe parted amicably, but now it seems like he's questioning that choice, and I don't think this makes any sense in my opinion, because Chloe's been nothing but supportive of Seth and about finding Sebastian. So it was hard to watch her reputation being questioned when, in my opinion, she's done nothing but try to help find Sebastian. And isn't that what everyone is trying to do? So I also thought it was interesting that they talked about the GoFundMe and that Seth is getting blowback in relation to having a GoFundMe. I don't know about the blowback. I don't think it's specifically related to the fact that they're using GoFundMe. I think it's that people have different ideas on how they want the money spent. And I think that Seth needs to be very clear when he's raising money exactly what the money is going to go to. Now, to be fair to Seth, he had no idea that his son was going to just disappear off the face of the earth. He's not a professional at this. He doesn't know how to set up GoFundMes and things like this. So I think people that are, you know, want the money to go, you know, toward a billboard or that are upset because he let his PIs go, I think we should cut him some slack. I think he is a grieving father who is doing the best that he can. Do you find it interesting that Tony Mathis 
and Seth were both talking about starting a trust fund. Now, this could be just because GoFundMe fees, and they do take a percentage of what you raise. And IRS also requires taxes be paid on the money. So by doing a nonprofit trust, Seth would be able to avoid taxes and fees. However, however, I do hope that Seth gets a lawyer to help him set up the trust because there are a lot of pitfalls and there are a lot of scammers out there that would love to take advantage of Seth while he's getting this done. Let's get back to the interview with Pas Dave Pascal and uh, Tony and Seth. So they also discussed the recorded call that's been released between justice warriors. Now this is private investigator Heather and Tracy and Chris Proudfoot. But the phone call was between P.I. Heather and Chris Proudfoot. So I do wonder who leaked this call. Now, according to P.I. Heather of Justice Warriors, it wasn't anyone on her team. She says she did send it to Seth and apparently he shared it with someone who allegedly leaked it. Seth and Tony did share that they do not believe that Chris Proudfoot ever had any intention of working with them. I agree. I think Chris Proudfoot went to that prayer vigil with the sole intention of getting himself on camera and gaslighting Seth into making a statement about them working together. This is something that narcissistic people do. I'm not saying Chris is a narcissist. I'm just using the word narcissist as an adjective. But I don't think Chris ever had any intention of working with Seth. Chris's goal, in my opinion, is solely to protect his own reputation. So one of the best questions I thought that P Dave Pascal asked was about that Nancy Grace interview where Nancy Grace spoke to the poly polygrapher and the polygrapher shared that Seth had told him that his theory was that Katie had given Seth his bedtime medicine and had given him too much. Allegedly, according to Tony, there was an agreement in place with Nancy's producer not to, according to Tony, not to ask Seth anything about this because they were concerned it might cause division or animosity toward the Proudfoots. Now, they're alleging that Nancy Grace's producer broke their agreement. Nancy Grace has not spoken out about this yet. I would definitely like to hear the other side of this dispute. But Nancy Grace did not ask Seth, so maybe it was a very narrow ask by Tony to the producer. Maybe he simply asked the producer to tell Nancy not to ask those questions to Seth and didn't know about or didn't mention not to ask the polygrapher. This could simply be semantics where Nancy and her producer agreed not to ask Seth anything negative about the Proudfoots and stuck to that agreement. However, they may not have agreed not to ask about the polygraph, and therefore it was considered fair game. I don't know what happened. I wasn't there. This is just my theory on what happened because it's very unusual for journalists not to protect their sources. And normally when a journalist is asked not to share something or asked to keep something off the record ahead of time, they honor that. But if they simply asked Nancy Grace not to ask Seth anything that might embarrass the Proudfoots or upset the Proudfoots, then from Nancy's point of view, and she's an attorney asking a polygrapher what he said, that's, she's not breaking the agreement. So I can understand why Seth feels upset, but we don't know everything that happened. Seth also discussed the North Carolina photograph that turned out not to be Sebastian. I thought this was one of the most heartbreaking moments in the interview. I mean, we were all hoping that image was Sebastian. Seth said that it gave him hope when he didn't feel like he had a lot of hope. This was heart-wrenching and it reminds all of us that this is not a TV show and that this is Seth Rogers' real life. And in, in my opinion, he is living a waking nightmare. This is a devastated father doing the very best that he can. There was also a veiled reference to something that I thought was very interesting about dash cam footage. Now this was not attributed to anyone specifically. But there's only one person who was driving around looking for Sebastian in a vehicle on February 26th besides law enforcement, 
and that was Katie Proudfoot. So in my opinion, the dash cam footage must belong to Katie. And apparently law enforcement has it, but Seth has not seen it. My analytics show me that a little over 50% of you guys are not subscribed to Reporter Room who are watching. Please subscribe. It's free and it helps me out so much. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you next time. Bye.